A ritualistic and symbolistic upside-down American flag was reportedly spotted outside the home of the conservative U.S. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito during the closing days of Donald Trump's presidential term in 2021. The inverted flag is a symbol that has become associated with Donald Trump's false claims that Joe Biden stole the election. Used by some Trump supporters during the January 6 Capitol riot, the flag was seen outside Alito's home on the 17th of January 2021, 10 days after the riot and coup in D.C., and three days before Joe Biden's inauguration, according to a report in the New York Times today. Now, the image of the flag outside Alito's home is likely to renew fears of partisanship among political appointees on the conservative-leaning court, the court has found itself at the centre of US culture wars in recent years for the rulings it has made, including the rollback of reproductive rights and a relaxation of restrictions relating to gun ownership. Now, in the New York Times, they claim that the word of the upside-down flag made its way back to the court as the justices were considering an election case related to ballot counting in Pennsylvania. Alito, an appointee of George W. Bush, was on the losing side of the decision. Later, Alito revealed to the Fox News anchor Shannon Bream that a neighbour called his wife an expletive, which was why she flew the flag upside down. Symbols of partiality, including flying an upside down US flag, could be a violation of the ethics rules designed to avoid even the appearance of bias from the Supreme Court justices. I don't quite understand why it's taken nearly four years to discover this and also to make sense of the fact that Justice Samuel Alito, alongside Clarence Thomas and certainly the three justices that were squeezed onto the Supreme Court by the disgraced former President Donald Trump, are not just on the right, but are likely on the far right whether they're part of religious cults or religious extremism or Christian nationalism. You see, the decisions like the reversal of Roe and the decisions on, on gun ownership and even decisions to support some of the policies that Donald Trump is pushing for, even asking for presidential immunity, the fact that they're even prepared to hear that, and that led by... Justice John Roberts, is very concerning for those who still believe that the Supreme Court should be unbiased and should be separate from, from government. And tragically, in the United States, the separation of church and state has become diluted to the point of being invisible. And in fact, many people on the right, including far-right justices, do not believe in the separation of church and state. And increasingly, as we've heard from Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, that it is not their view that the founders wanted a separation of church and state because their interpretation of the Constitution is that it was based on religious beliefs and religious teachings. And, and so two completely different versions of America seen through two completely different lenses. That is what we're dealing with now. And, and the fact that the Supreme Court is even willing to hear Donald Trump's argument about claiming presidential immunity is proof that there really is no independent judiciary. And even the delays in hearing the January 6 case that Jack Smith has prepared to put in front of Judge Tanya Chutkin is, is further proof that the system is preventing justice from being done. You know, we all watched Donald Trump standing on the podium on January 6th, suggesting that people should go to the Capitol and he was going to go with them, and if they didn't fight, they wouldn't have a country anymore. Well, that rhetoric continues. Fight like hell, and claiming that the election was stolen. Donald Trump still insists the election was stolen. And so do many senior Republicans in Congress and in the Senate. People who should know better? Because the problem is that every time they spew this stuff, these lies, they are impacting U.S. democracy. And the knock-on effect of that is the U.S. loses its standing in the world.
You know, and I, I'm very much of the opinion that the reason that the U.S. is struggling to intervene in, in Israel, in, in the war in Gaza, is because the U.S. does not have respect from the rest of the world as it did before Donald Trump's presidency. He really created a very much a laughing stock upon the world stage. People looked on him when he stood up at the UN and for all of his activities, everything from using a sharpie to extend a, a storm to gassing his own citizens as he went to hold up a Bible for a photo op. The behaviour of a wannabe dictator and disrespecting the peaceful right to protest, disrespecting women's rights and women's health care, and disrespecting minority groups and the LGBTQ plus community. That tragically is what Donald Trump stands for. And his promises for this next election are to deport 12 million immigrants. America was built by immigrants. America is proudly a nation of immigrants. And to seek to blame them when most people are completely unaffected by immigration it, it, it is quite rich. It is just a, a dog whistle, again, to the far right and to the extremes. And what used to be the fringe of American politics has now very much moved to, to the very centre. And in Joe Biden, we have a man who, despite being a Catholic, is the only candidate that is advocating for, for women's rights, for women's health care, and for putting abortion back in the hands of women and their doctors. And Donald Trump is ultimately seeking a, a federal abortion ban and will probably end up banning contraception. And we've also already heard that Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation's plan for the, the US government being rebuilt in Donald Trump's image, they plan to ban pornography and, and, and things that Joe Biden is, is proud of, like trying to decriminalize marijuana on a, on a national scale. Those types of crimes will once again be putting people in prison. And we will end up in a, in a country that reflects the, the Handmaid's Tale, a, a, a dystopian future that is fictional, but is increasingly becoming a reality. And, and, and now we've heard from Katie Britt keeping tabs on, on women who get pregnant in the US so that they can be monitored to make sure that they don't have an abortion. That is where this country is heading, aside from probably banning gay marriage and, and again, banning trans people from working with children. It, it is a, a, a shocking indictment of how the extreme views of a few have now been centralized. And as we're discovering, people on the Supreme Court who lied about their views, we saw that with the, the three justices that Donald Trump rubber stamped. I mean, they all said when interviewed that, that Roe versus Wade was sacred and, and was very much baked into the law. They were the first to sign off on its reversal. So, Nobody really is to be trusted. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is in criminal court. Once again, there are his surrogates and his supporters who are trying to devalue the criminal justice system and the judiciary by saying that this case has no merit and that he is entitled to immunity. And they never say that he didn't commit the crime. They just say that he shouldn't be, uh, be tried for it. And even he has stood up and said, you know, why are they coming after me? I, I'm rich. I'm successful. And using those types of claims as an excuse for why he should not be subject to the same law as everybody else. And so going back to Justice Samuel Alito, now there are calls for him to recuse himself from any of these cases, especially the immunity case over Donald Trump not to mention what is likely to come from Jack Smith to really hold somebody to account for January 6th, where Donald Trump 
effectively brought about a coup against his own country and tried to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. He's going to do it again. In November, if he loses, he will again claim that the election was rigged and we will see January 6th on a far greater scale. Will, will America ever learn its lesson? Why are we allowing this country to sleepwalk into autocracy? An autocracy protected by the judiciary, an autocracy that is protected by lawmakers who really and truly should have ratified Donald Trump's first impeachment when he tried to extort or when he did extort Vladimir Zelensky and said, find dirt on the Bidens or I'll withhold support. And then the second time Donald Trump was impeached, again, this time for, uh, for January 6th and subverting the election, it was not ratified in the Senate. The Republicans have been supporting Donald Trump at, at every juncture. And really, if only they had held him to account the first time that he broke US law, then he wouldn't be an issue right now. But they've put all their eggs into his basket. And they are convinced that his brand of extremist and far-right and evangelical Christian nationalism is the way they want America to go. The decision is down to you, not me. You get to decide in November. So make your vote count, because if Donald Trump gets elected, you may never get the chance to vote ever again. I'm Anthony Davis. You can catch me on the 5-Minute News Channel on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.